Hey, um, so yeah, uh, I was just uh, figuring out some logistics. <laughs> uh, what do we say? Uh, Judah, you had shared a couple of links slash files around. You want to talk about those? I suppose it's in relation to the prompt about metacognition. Yeah. So, see, actually, see, I tried to like watch like the previous video, but I I had like a little bit of a sleepless uh, week, so like I kept trying to watch it, and uh, I don't know, I never got around to finishing the whole thing. So, I mean, I hope it's it's uh, like I can still uh, manage this class first of all. Uh, second of all, um, I feel when you're asking us to think about metacognition, you're actually trying to you know tell us uh, about personal growth in professional thinking or how to become an expert or you know like in any field of thinking any discipline uh, it requires us to be mindful about the things the tools we are working with and the people who have specific problems which the discipline tends to, uh, discipline uh, focuses on answering so there's this like general principle of you know metacognition or critical thinking in which we are engaging with the the you know knowledge that the discipline provides uh, yeah okay akshay the experiment in class and all of that yeah we're all experimenters co 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 experimenters so what i was saying is that so it, 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 while we are engaging with the tools, if we hit a dead end, we have to be, uh, you know, uh, have some self-awareness about the broad overview of options. What are the other uh, avenues we can explore? So it requires a little bit of metacognition into trying different approaches. Okay, how can I try a different approach? Okay, it, so it's like, so it's like uh, I would, I would, if I had to give an analogy, it would be like. Going along a particular stream would be, you know, narrow-mindedly getting a work done, but metacognition allows you to take a helicopter and go to a different river altogether. So the the the, the links that I provided, I mean, the articles I provided were not things, not all, not everything I explored. I explored only one of them, which was a based on a course on clinical reasoning. And how metacognition kind of plays the part of a, like a switch, like a thinking switch. How to, yeah, that's basically what I want to say. Thanks, thanks for sharing. Um, others, uh, what are your thoughts um, about the prompt that I shared, and also about what you have said, and anything? Uh, I can add to what Judah said. Uh, I, I mean, or, or to be honest, I read only the last couple of minutes from Wikipedia, but uh, the sense I got is one component is being aware of and, and critically engaging with what knowledge or content we are uh, learning, but also on the uh, the way our cognition works like the way i learn might be different from the way judah learns or someone else learns uh, and being aware of what capacity we have to learn and our limitations like some topics might be difficult for me and uh, and being aware of that will help me engage it engage with it in a different way or give it more effort or whatever uh, plus the kind of methods or uh, the way I would process certain certain content could be different. In terms of coding also, I think the strategies we use or overall what are all the strategies that exist and 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 that that helps us know how to jump from one to the other, like what whatever stream example that should I
thank you thank you for those insights Yeah, I'm looking at Ravi's unmuted microphone, but I uh, can't hear Ravi. Oh, no, I, I muted it from the hardware because I was having some issues. Uh -huh, so, um, Ravi, did, did you also want to add something? Uh, also, Arun and Vaishnavi. Yeah, I was very curious from all this. As far as I remember, about how we can regulate or the thought process behind learning and about our own cognition. So, has always been a curious topic for me. I don't have any. I don't have any particular thing to say. Okay, thank you for your curiosity. Um, Arun and Vaishnavi, uh, you are the... Hi, I'm, am I audible? Yes, Vaishnavi. So I would agree with a lot, like the prompt question you gave and the prompt you gave. I would agree with a lot what Swati said that uh, metacognition, as far as I know, from the basic psychology I have studied, is something being aware about your own work. So if I am learning, if I am reading something or learning something, I'm aware that yeah, this is, this is how I am processing it. This may be wrong, this may be right. And what are my learning styles, that sort of stuff. So like knowledge, being knowledgeable about the stuff you are doing being basically being knowledgeable about knowledge is something how i thought about metacognition to be when you gave the prompt secondly how it is related to what we are doing here in the uh in this purposeful programming uh, sessions uh if i would say that uh, like as as i would say this from my own experience that i have tried to learn coding and programming a lot of time from a lot of people like from Coursera courses or from YouTube because I wanted to learn data data uh, data analysis etc like basic but I have never understood or never were able to learn because as far as I know I didn't know that what I am learning why I'm learning what's the basic what's the basically purpose of it what is programming how it is done I was just doing random things in Python so in this I know like uh, the way the classes and sessions are structured we have some like reason behind it uh, some reasoning behind it some thoughts behind it we are doing it because it makes sense to us and hence like this is how i will process uh, your prompt so we are more or less this only nice thanks um uh, yeah, Arun, uh, I'll give you also a chance for your primary comments and then I will ask a couple of follow-up questions to Vaishnavi and Judah and Swati. Hi, Akshay. I haven't... I just now searched on internet what is metacognition. And I go to understand that it's the uh, it's the uh, awareness of one's own thought process and understanding of the patterns behind it. So it's basically understanding uh, ourselves, how we learn certain things, and uh, the understanding is very necessary uh, necessary for what uh, the things we lack, and necessary to understand the things we lack and how we can improve on that things
okay thank you um yeah i mean thanks everyone for uh, yeah the we did you want to add something else yeah so i think a curious question is like how we how we uh, know that we understood what we learned like that kind of question will go away, right mm -hmm. so so how do you like evaluate how do you know that how, how do you quote unquote know you understood what you learned? And I think that is a very important question. And many times I have been <clears throat> deceived uh, more than I would like to admit. Makes sense. Yeah. In, in fact, uh, that that's uh, that's something uh, that makes me wonder. Um, maybe we can spend the uh, next uh, uh, maybe 10 15 minutes thinking about uh, specifically uh, like question is saying specifically about this uh, series of discussions that we are having online um, which uh, like in the first uh, meeting that we had i mentioned this is an experiment i have no idea what i'm doing uh, so um, maybe we can um, sit together uh, with the context that uh, this is a metacognitive process and uh, with the idea that uh, uh, the, the, the purpose of <laughs> doing all of this is to um, learn programming um, as an adult or, uh, or just learn programming uh, for fun. Um, with that purpose and with the uh, intention to introspect on how we are doing. Um, maybe, uh, do you have any thoughts on, um, you know, what are we doing? Uh, how are we doing it? Um, uh, are we are we learning anything? Are we, uh, what, what else should we be doing? What is the uh, design? Uh, uh, is it working out? If it's working out, why? If it's, uh, if, if some parts of it are not working out, what are those parts which are not working out? So essentially, it's it's like, um, you know, it's like it's a midpoint kind of thing for the, uh, the the curriculum that we had designed together. So I'm like, let's maybe reevaluate the method that we're choosing, and uh, what better way to do it than by using the tools of metacognition? Was my thought. So what thoughts on that further question? I have one idea. Um, basically, like each of us will be doing different things in our different lives. So like, do, we, do each of us have an idea on how to use computers to make that work a little easier? Like, is it possible to automate like whatever we want to? So then, so all of us could like put in ideas of, you know, the maybe a workflow or and steps in the our workflow to automate. And then, um, would using a computer make that easier? Would using our phones uh, to automate a certain thing make lives easier? And would it uh, be a more effective effective overall system? That's one idea. Second idea is maybe we want to go. Maybe some of us have ideas that we want to go beyond our domain and we have an idea for uh, an application or uh, um, you know some idea some idea that, that involves computers so maybe some of us could give ideas and then other people maybe like join a team of you know that person's idea and uh, we could see how each of our, you know, ideas kind of evolve, but that's an idea. So I'm just going to take a step back and let uh, everyone talk to each other. And I'm also listening.
uh, i'm just reflecting on the um, on, on what throughout these sessions what is what are some things that i've taken away or how has it helped in in the day to day things uh i don't know if i can give exact concrete examples but there are these minute things that i feel has helped me like uh just getting eased into like that there are so there are several tools that we can use and and that i think getting intimidated by the tools has reduced a little bit in the sense that i i feel much more uh easier to say google find out how things work and and search for tools that might make things easier and that is something that has helped uh and the last two sessions about how how code works was useful i i feel that could go a little more deeper and, and where we can see concretely the results or the impact that code can have while dealing with data that is something that would really help me as a researcher and uh and honestly i think i should also engage a little bit outside of the session to learn post session engage with the sheet and um yeah I, without that just the sh- sessions might not be very impactful Can everyone just like have a, a say? Like Arun, Ravi, Vaishnavi, others. I don't have anything more to say. Like I agree with whatever Swati said. And yeah, whatever I had to say, I said like previously. Nothing more to add. okay let me jump back in so um um i also uh, understand uh, that it's uh, unfair to um suddenly ask for um deep thoughts because uh, for me for example i have been thinking forever uh, like i wrote in my initial tweet uh, for maybe 5 6 years about how how people learn computers programming and uh, what are some strategies to learn programming and i've read <laughs> i've read uh, a couple of books about teaching programming specifically um so <laughs> then therefore uh, i would have a lot of thoughts and uh, it's unfair for me to ask uh, please give me thoughts feedback and stuff like that but uh, i hear uh, judas uh, ideas of working on uh, ideas uh, and that probably has a lot of potential on um uh, uh judas learning at least uh, uh and if someone else also feels the same way about learning they would also have some of that uh, benefit and uh, uh 
Swati, uh, I agree with you spot on about uh, the need for, um, and I, I guess Vaishnav also mentioned that uh, contextualizing that learning to your work and to do it, use it outside your, I mean, outside of these one hour sessions and in your work. Uh, uh, so, um, yeah, okay. Uh, anyhow, uh, this is just a uh, you know, beginning a conversation kind of thing uh, in everyone's mind as to the idea of metacognition and the, uh, the, the, the very way of looking at it. Uh, I wish Darren had joined this uh, call because uh, last uh, two, three weeks back, there was a comment that Darren said, which, uh, which actually <laughs> made me think about metacognition again. The, idea that uh, teachers kind of somehow messed up uh, 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 concepts or what is variable, what is function, um, that kind of um, confusion was created by teachers. Uh, I mean, uh, of course, uh, uh, when uh, one is in school or at that uh, level of our uh, education, uh, we do expect uh, that uh, teachers don't confuse us. Uh, but then uh, also whether um, we are somehow um, used to those kinds of patterns in our adulthood as well is something we can question, right? Like, uh, are we learning things, uh, um, like are we creating learning pathways for ourselves uh, in, in our uh, work or in our in, in anything, I mean, uh, I for one firmly believe that uh, with the right amount of privilege, uh, which includes uh, uh, time, money, a lot of things, uh, ability, uh, physical, social, all of those, um, the uh, it is possible for uh, everyone to create a learning experience that suits their needs. Uh, but uh, uh, for that, we need uh, some kind of uh, thinking about that learning itself, which is what uh, the conversation uh, I wanted to start in this, this thing. So uh, if you want to interrupt me, please go ahead. I was I was going to switch to a different thing altogether. Ravi? Uh, I think in schools, uh, this is also a problem that they want to go with same pace and same syllabus for everyone. And uh, then they like, they're taking tests and all expecting everyone to learn this much. Maybe people's goals might differ or, or, you know, what I'm saying is maybe you say everyone uh, has to learn this much, even if that is the goal. Even if I assume that everyone in your class in a school uh, who ha wants to learn this much, then the pace might be different or you know, whatever works for them might be different. So I think that is the problem with that approach and recognizing the problem, I think uh, then I have, uh, like for me personally, I, I have tried to slow down the pace in many, many things and when I want to learn. So yeah, after recognizing such a problem, I think we can solve it. For example, for example, you want some person to learn driving. Now, you don't want them to learn partial driving. You want to learn, want them to be like good driver. So, you don't have to like say everyone learns driving in three months, and after three months, there's a test and you will fail. You can give another person, you know, four or five months or something, uh, maybe rather than expecting everyone to have the same time frame. Obviously, deadlines are <laughs> necessary, I'm not saying uh, infinite time. But yeah, I think these are my, my inputs. Makes sense, makes a lot of sense. Uh, uh, on that note, um, uh, I also want to uh, make uh, two kind of reminders. Uh, one uh, the the there is no need to uh, think that this group that we have created or uh, this uh, uh, this structure or whatever we are doing 
is to be controlled by me as in Akshay. Uh, you can feel free to uh, modify uh, or do experiments with the group uh, like on your own. Like if you like Judah, if you want to create a faction or a subgroup and work on a project, uh, feel free to by all means uh, talk about it and get others involved and uh, start. And uh, um, the uh, uh, video, so for example, uh, Judah again, uh, you said in the beginning that you missed one uh, listening uh, video uh, and uh, you're not sure how it's going to affect the learning. Again, um, I think the videos or the, the one hour that we spend, of course, it adds a lot of fuel to uh, the learning experience. But uh, the, the whole experiment is not just about the one hour. It's also about, uh, you know, taking a cohort of people uh, through a process where they might start, like Swati was saying, uh, they start seeing things uh, um, in more detail or uh, like feel less magical about technology and see more, okay, these are the implementation details. Uh, this is just this or this is only this. <laughs> this this can be understood in these particular ways. So that kind of different way of thinking about technology or certain parts of it. Um, so th those are the uh, experiments I set out with. So which means uh, you don't necessarily have to think that the, the videos have to be followed linearly and uh, that is going to give something uh, great or that I have all the answers and that therefore uh, just sticking with me is going to help. <laughs> Feel free to uh, uh, find out your own path within the uh, within or without. I mean, you might want to start a totally different uh, kind of journey. So that's also possible. Uh, all, all, all that I'm saying is let's apply some of that metacognition into uh, uh, into this. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying this is not a topic that you, you're not aware of. It's just a reminder that we have to apply that to this uh, also, because we tend to know a lot of things, but only when we are reminded to apply that, do we sometimes apply those to our, uh, to, to something. So I'm just reminding you to apply metacognition. You as in all of you, no, I'm not talking to just Judah. I see Judah is typing. So, um, Yes, this is a catalytic process, I suppose. Uh, but it also is an experiment for me in the sense I am picking up a certain, uh, I'm validating certain uh, um, tools, uh, facilitation, uh, these things and stuff like that, just to see what works out. It's like a practice, uh, this thing for me. I do plan to kind of uh, use this uh, later on again, like, I don't know, uh, to, to maybe uh, create a course for uh, uh, for a totally different section of population uh, and figure out if it works for them. So those kinds of uh, ideas are what I have for the later on uh, for this process. So I need to work, validate certain styles of facilitation and see if it actually works. So yeah, but it's also a catalytic process in that sense. So um, it's 9.32, halfway through uh, today's hour, which means uh, I actually thought I would share a project that I was uh, doing. Um, I will I will talk about uh, that for two minutes and then I will switch to um, a different thing. So uh, let me share the screen. There is this website called mfcindia.org. Uh, uh, th th this is a group of uh, people of all kinds. Uh, many of you are members uh, or uh, closely work with people in this. So um, they have been around since 1974, Medical Friends Circle, uh, Secular, Pluralist, Pro People, Pro Poor, uh, Scientists, whatever they call themselves. Um, what I was really interested in is uh, they have this uh, bulletins. Uh, from 1976, they have been publishing bulletins. Uh, I've opened uh, them in five tabs. Uh, what you can see is uh, uh, for each uh, for each decade, so 1976 to 1980, they have one uh, whole uh, listing of the articles and which bulletin they belong 
to that that article belongs to and the author subject and all that and then if you click on the title uh, it'll open the pdf actually and the pdf would have multiple articles it's not just one articles pdf it, this is from a long time back it's not a journal uh, or a, it doesn't use software and all so um, uh, they, there are pdfs so um, the the challenge i was kind of having uh, or especially mfc folks uh, because they are celebrating the 50th year uh, next uh, 2024 they started in 1974 uh, they wanted to kind of archive all this uh, uh, knowledge or writings or insights, communications, everything that they have been doing for, for the last 50 years. And uh, they felt like these bulletins, the way they are laid out on the net, internet right now is not very accessible. Uh, like, uh, um, I mean, th from the home page, for example, there is no way to know that uh, there is an article about, let's say, uh, what is this article about? Develop a study circle where friends meet and discuss problems. <laughs> so uh, the concept of a study circle is discussed in um, some issue of this bulletin by this particular author. There's no way to figure that out from um, the front page or even from the bulletins page uh, or even if you do a Google search, uh, it's difficult. So uh, for that reason, they wanted to kind of do it in a different way. Uh, of course, uh, it's easy to figure out what we need, but uh, not so easy to implement uh, that uh, or even to draw a, a user flow, user journey of saying, okay, the user should have a search box here and then they should. If, if people don't really uh, know what will make something more accessible, they just know that it's not accessible. So, um, uh, what I was trying to do was even. For whatever we will have to do, uh, we will have to get this data in a better format. Uh, this is uh, just simply uh, too difficult for people to navigate. And uh, I was trying to uh, extract all these uh, articles, the list, uh, the subject. They, someone even did the uh, difficult job of categorizing the subject. So uh, I was trying to get all of this down into uh, uh, a spreadsheet or something which which I can process uh, easily and also maybe get the content of the article into a uh, more searchable form and then create a search engine on top of that and stuff like that. So for that I had to use uh, some Python. Uh, uh, I will, I uh, hope uh, this screen is also visible. Uh, yeah, it's visible. So, um, I'll just quickly show what I did. Uh, uh, I'm not gonna sh go through the detail today. We will, if many people are interested, look at the detail later. So I wrote a small Python script like this. I mean, it didn't start with uh, 200 lines. It started with uh, <laughs> two, three lines. And then uh, one by one, uh, I wrote lines. And over one day I had this, uh, whole script uh, what it does is it uh, goes to so i will i'll show you the starting point uh, and then uh, so this is where it starts uh, if name is equal to main so it will first process uh, the 70s page so it will go to this uh, 70s article page uh, and then uh, from there it will get uh, this table uh, and go it go on it row by row and get the uh, uh, the hyperlink the PDF that is there, the author name, the subject, the article, I mean, what type of article it is, the date, the issue, and all of that. Uh, so all of that is done by this process function and this process function, I mean, it calls a series of functions one by one by one by one to clean up to, you know, some uh, in some places uh, they have, uh, for example, um, they've written 1976 Jan to February here. like. For the computer to understand, okay, this is 1976 January to 1976 February, we have to tell the computer certain stuff. Uh, and similarly, if we go to a different uh, year, uh, from 2001, for example, they change the format. Uh, it will some it'll sometimes say uh, where is that? 
not in this year. Uh, they changed the format in 2011. Yeah. So here it will say is August 10 to Jan 11, which means it's not August 10 the date. It's uh, 2010 August to 2011 Jan. So things like that kept coming up. So I had to write uh, small small functions to fix that. And also, I didn't want to download the same PDF files uh, 2000 times. Uh, if each time I run, I didn't want to download. So I had to uh, write a small uh, function to cache the result. So uh, once I download, uh, I keep it in a file uh, in a folder called cache and uh, it will it'll save the PDF. Uh, so the next time it will check if the PDF is already in the cache and it won't download again. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, that's that's all I did. And then, uh, with all the records and uh, all that stuff which it downloaded, what it does is it will put it in a CSV file. So uh, let me show the CSV is there. Uh, it's called output.csv. Yeah. Open with what is this? Uh, okay, that's not useful. Uh, let me open it in spreadsheet. There it is. So uh, this is uh, the kind of output uh, in the CSV format. I mean, it's the same uh, tables only, but uh, uh, this is for all the years in one uh, one lo long uh, CSV. So we have around thousand five hundred. Uh, 1600, 1582 uh, articles, uh, including uh, the author name and topic and subject and which issue, which month, all of that. And um, what this allows us to do is, I mean, once it is in this format, uh, like Vaishnavi would know, uh, Vaishnavi just um, compiled our data from uh, some food uh, nutrition uh, tables. So uh, th those kinds of uh, tables, once it's there, then uh, it becomes much more easy to process. So here, for example, uh, we took the author, uh, authors, some articles might have two, three authors. So uh, I had to actually split it uh, by the comma and, and all of that and use the standard separator. So I'm separating everyone by a semicolon. So later on, it becomes easier to process and things like that. Now. Uh, Another thing I did is the output, I didn't just save it as a CSV. I used uh, something called Hugo. Uh, I'll just show what Hugo is. Hugo.io. Go Hugo.io. Hugo is a, a simple uh, static site generator, which means uh, uh, all it does is you give it a template and you give it some data. It will uh, convert. It will create, uh, if you give it 1000 rows and one template, it will give you 1000 pages with content from that uh, record, I mean from the CSV or uh, from the 1000 rows and the output will look like the template that you gave. So that's what it uh, does in a simple way. Uh, Ravi has <laughs> worked on some Hugo websites, uh, Ravi will know. Um, so the, uh, the output, so I also made it output uh, these content into um, into a content folder. Uh, so each item, I created a, a file with uh, the same thing. Uh, and uh, one one small thing also I did is uh, all the PDF that I downloaded, I converted them to TXT uh, text file. So uh, we we looked at formats. So uh, this was done with uh, just a convert command uh, from PDF to TXT and uh, eventually what I had was, uh, so I'll just go to the site and run it. Mm. This will take about 10 seconds to compile because it's thousand something pages. Actually, uh, I would just like to say as a, as someone who uses MFC a lot, just really thank you for like simplifying it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, this will come up. Uh, this is part of Sochara's archiving archival work. So, uh, yeah. Sochara, JNU we are gonna. Uh, my university's MPH is half of the content is just from MFC website. Nice, nice. So uh, once uh, 
once uh, once i get the control of this website i will add a, a url to it it will probably be archives.sojra.org/mfc and then um, yeah i mean if you have specific use cases we can add some of those features also so whatever whatever helps uh, th that was the exact idea uh, to make it easier for all the researchers and uh, all all people to kind of get uh, better access so uh, uh, this is the output as of now i mean this is just a work in progress i started work only uh, last thursday and i mean last friday and i didn't work on it this week at all so um, uh, we already have uh, some useful features like we have things uh, divided by subjects uh, so this is this subject we are actually using their own categorization so we haven't changed this subject categorization yet but uh, there is also the possibility that we can add our own categories so we can see that uh, mfc is particularly interested in things like drug misuse or medical education and uh, maternal health so if you open did that you, did you use these categories to uh, major categories and then like sub categories so like children and maternal health nutrition and then you can subdivide it like child health maternal health health policy etc because Correct. these are a lot of categories to you know go through like a person will just lose interest hmm, hmm, hmm. makes sense i mean uh, uh, that particular intellectual work so i i am only doing the programming work for uh, this particular project there is also rajiv br uh, if you know them uh, rajiv is also working on this intellectual how to categorize and how to catalog this uh, activity and if you are particularly interested i can put you in touch with rajiv so that we can all work as a team and figure out what categories what hierarchy what uh, so the categorization exercise is much uh, more dangerous than uh, it sounds uh, because if i put something in maternal health and uh, uh, where do i put maternal health uh, does it come under maternal child health does it come under nutrition does it come i mean uh, there are different ways different people will look at the hierarchy and uh, then it becomes a different uh, debate altogether so uh, i want help in that particular part um uh, yeah so uh, <laughs> coming back to the point uh, i was trying to make was uh, like uh, vaishnavi said uh, the website was there for a long time and um, uh, it, it it was it was there i mean it was accessible also like if you knew that you had to search you could search and you you could find uh, all these things but uh, there there could be different way of organizing uh, the content or different way of making it accessible the search doesn't work yet but uh, we we can uh, bring, add search engines or uh, organize by authors so um, if you want to find uh, what this person wrote we can find okay they have written about homeopathy and that pebbles from a lonely beach whatever that means so uh, so these kinds of stuff becomes possible all of a sudden so this is what uh, computers are uh, typically about it's about knowledge and information uh, you know cataloging uh, uh, creating hierarchies templates and stuff like that this is what computers are particularly good at they uh, I mean artificial intelligence and um, stuff like that are just dreams of people uh, what computers are really good at is excel and spreadsheets and uh, uh, creating kind of like this uh and uh, for this you only uh, need uh, uh, simple programming uh, concepts like the one we started exploring two weeks back about uh, how to process uh, some text how to delete uh, how to how to trim how to split words and things like that so um, that uh, having shown that i will just close this now and Uh, we can play one exercise so the reason i'm not showing the code at the moment is i'm not sure uh, if uh, everyone among us are uh, familiar with html so the reason i could uh, quickly scrape it is because this is all in an html table um so let's let's look at uh, some way to explore what html is before we get into all of that um uh he, we have like 12 minutes okay small game uh, up for it for a game you have uh, 
distractions okay yeah yeah okay two people are there uh we we need at least two people uh but others are also welcome to join so this is a similar format to the spy game um we need one person to be uh the presenter who can uh, draw on this uh, uh whiteboard or whatever this is called and um you i mean when you get the access uh, you can see that you can change the uh, actually let me try to share my screen i don't know if you create a problem uh, uh yeah it doesn't work with screen share on so uh, you can essentially change the size of the dot or uh, create uh, rectangles uh, you can write text and a lot of things you can do so what i want uh, is the rest of you will team up and figure out a strategy on how to write something in shared notes in the shared notes part such that just by looking at that uh, the person who is drawing on the board can um, you know accurately draw what you wanted to draw on the board uh, does that make sense so for example um i would say uh, i hope you can see the shared notes i would say you would want something like uh, purposeful programming and i want this at the center of the screen and uh, i want it uh, followed by uh, and i want it to be bold and maybe even have an underline and uh, i would need a list of participants below that and that should have uh, names of people or something like that uh, the thing is uh, you cannot use uh, these formatting options you cannot use uh, bold or italic or anything you have to communicate to the other person without using uh, formatting options with only characters with only you can write bold and uh, uh, purposeful programming but or you can come up with any scheme but you cannot use anything else that's the kind of uh, challenge i wanted to give up there's only 10 minutes i don't know if we can play to the full extent but uh, who wants to be the draw drawing person or writing person of course you can all discuss together and choose a drawing person later is a game clear uh, does it make sense yeah i think the instructions are clear maybe we all should uh, discuss what we would want the uh, uh, topic to be and then one of us can become the drawer and then we can go ahead i just wanted to add one more thing you can't use enter also right okay because uh, it's just one line of text that you can typically pass through a uh, through a wire if you're sending a message through a wire you you don't have enter or anything you just you can pass if you want to type enter i mean uh, send the character enter you can create a code for it okay you can say enter if you type e n t e r it means new line or something like that whatever you want you can create but you cannot use uh, spacing or bold or italic or any other formatting thing to convey information about appearance for for uh, for the lack of time i would suggest you can probably start with what i described purposeful programming in the center and uh, uh, bolded and heading and then number of participants something like that in the bottom and maybe you can add some bells and whistles
you do realize that this needs to be coordinated by communicating right What's your strategy, Arun, Judah, Swati, Ravi? Hey, Akshay, could you just uh, repeat uh, what, what you were saying? I was just, I, I dozed off a bit. The, uh, the challenge is to have uh, a system of writing down instruction in simple plain text with not even you can't use space enter etc to convey the sense of uh, uh, where aesthetics design you can only use uh, text uh, in one line one continuous line of string to convey the idea that something needs to be displayed in a particular spot on the screen and uh, it needs to be large text color red or yellow or anything uh, whatever kind of formatting you want uh, you should display, uh, you should uh, write as text and another person, in this case Ravi, should be able to decode it and create the correct uh, representation of that on the screen, on the whiteboard. Oh, uh, okay. so, yeah, I, yeah I, I thought a few maybe rules that we could create uh, suggestions for that is uh, if we were to write text we make we write it as text and then with inverted comma whatever text it is followed by what format we want it in we can have the next line saying format uh, bold italic underline whatever uh, and maybe even say heading or subheading or uh, normal text all of that under format we can mention i think judah you had something to say Wait, wait, wait. So, I, no, I, did, I just wanted to repeat uh, what uh, Akshay was saying. Akshay was basically saying, uh, and so that just so that we can, uh, so that I, uh, like, I do what to clarify if I understood correctly. Akshay is saying, now I have to give a particular set of instructions to Ravi, okay, uh, without using any um, space, any uh, punctuation, any indentation, uh, in order for him to process that information and draw whatever he gets on the uh, on the whiteboard, everything can be written as functions to text. So, I mean, before we do that, we have to agree on a particular set of symbols, right? That such and such thing means such and such thing. Uh, sure, we can use our you know natural language or you know our verbal language to um, you know in order for me to uh, you know somehow guess that he will understand the same thing in which i want him to mean like i'm just being a little bit metacognitive about this whole thing <laughs> um so i feel that essentially one way of going about it is to embed functions so we can be like maybe use brackets so maybe i would uh, i would try something like um like a low okay okay you're saying you can use punctuation numbers let us just not spacing enter formatting okay cool so you're saying you want one 
executed function basically right you want you want to execute one function in which all of the information will be transmitted to a single image in, in the size and the color right right akshay if i'm not mistaken i mean or multiple functions but essentially doing the the visual processing thing so um let me try so i i, I can do it in public chat or shared notes shared notes is best i think uh, okay i mean if you want to use strategy public notes wherever uh. okay so i'm not going to go for an, a, a previously agreed uh, set of symbols so i'm just going to like try it and just think this out loud while doing it so say uh, i want the lg logo okay wait lg logo um and i want i want this to be let's say you know um half half screen size you can use I one want... space okay uh, i mean as in one space at a time if you use spacing to create a space uh, um, aesthetics that's the problem if you want to use one space as like space is fine It's fine. I want to use space. <laughs> uh, size half screen. Uh, color blue. Uh, position red. Position center. How's that? Do you have to describe the LG logo as well, or, or am I like supposed to understand what the LG is? Ah, Judah, perhaps, perhaps you can use just text for this exercise because LG logo, what LG logo is, or image might not be a uh, possible at the moment. Unless LG is basically it. the LG, like you have to write LG. That's all. <laughs> that's the LG logo. Okay. Word mark. Uh, is that the strategy that you are fine with, or are we already starting to draw? <laughs> Is the best I could do. <laughs> I'm not sure if it is half a screen size. <laughs> it is more. <laughs> Super. Uh, let me. Uh, 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 I know it's already time to. Let me just ask one more question. Uh, Judah or uh, uh, all of you. Uh, what if I wanted the G to be green and L to be blue? How would you change this schema now? So I mean, you can write two functions. Uh, you can copy this. So I would be like, um, I would copy it out in this fashion. Um, so you want the G to be green, right? G to be green. Oops, why is it not? Uh, okay. So I want color blue. So I'll just change it to like green. And uh, Same thing. I'll copy and uh, hey, why is the cursor not working properly? Um, and I put this is blue. And I put this is L. So now two things. Oh, but then the problem will be that uh, both will come dead center. So you know, position center, little left. <laughs> position center little right <laughs> how's that
does it work for you others uh, yeah i mean at least for us as human beings it works hmm as of now it works till i ask you to draw g o o g l e in six different colors <laughs> okay so um uh, yeah ravi is drawing it um, maybe we can uh, end the session today after this drawing is complete uh, but uh, maybe uh, think about this uh, problem think about how to represent formatting in just text plain text uh, throughout uh, the week uh, next week we can continue this game uh, if you want to group together and strategize uh, in the week that's fine but if you don't have time for it that's also fine um, let's pick up this game from where we stopped next week so that uh, uh, that will help us to uh, go to the next topic that i was going to say which is about markup and processing html websites and stuff like that so yeah thank you Thank you. Bye. I like how you I like how you overlap the L and the G. It's like you didn't have to but you did. Nice. It's a, it's a mistake. I don't have good equipment to draw. No, no, but it was uh, it was very smartly disobedient. I like it. Very nice. Okay, I'll end the room then. Um...